So, <laughs> pretty, pretty safe to assume that I've taken apart uh, a tremendous amount of things. Uh, and I think that when someone does that, a couple of things happen, right? The first thing is that, you know, as you're going along, the amount of information you glean from that process increases drastically, right? At first, you're like, yeah, what's inside this thing? And before you know it, you're taking something apart, and it's like having a conversation with the person who designed it, right? It's, you get insights, you get, make assumptions about, uh, you know, about their, their goals and their... their uh, you know, in, the, in the design process. And for me, that's really interesting. It, again, you know, kind of voyeuristic way of looking at that process. Uh, because of my, my background in building digital stuff, right? It's hard for me to not compare the two design processes and maybe think about you know, what the two might be able to learn from each other, right? So the other thing that happens is you, you stop looking at a thing in terms of its output, right? Instead, you, you start looking at, at something in terms of sort of the underlying interconnected uh, forces and components and, uh, and things that, that make that stuff happen, right? For example, you know, microwaves are not magical boxes that make Hot Pockets super dangerous, right? Uh, it's a shielded enclosure that, you know, util utilizes a physical input device and then feeds into a microcontroller, which uses timers, relays, and other passive components to, you know, power a, a motor that turns a turntable with a rotational force and a magnetron that uses radiation to piss off the water molecules in your food, making it hot, right? So similarly, this presentation is not, you know, text and shapes and stuff, you know, randomly grouped and, uh, you know, in these, you know, rectangular slide type things, right? This is actually uh, disk-like scalable vector graphics rotating on a fixed axis by an animation library, you know, from commands in a finite state machine keyed on the current slide index, right? So you start looking at things in terms of the underlying interconnected systems and forces, and you start to notice that, you know, even common stuff, even if, if things don't have, like, much in common, like, functionally, right, there's a lot, a lot of similarities under the hood, you know, sort of behind the curtain, right? For example, this motor, right, in this microwave provides the same rotational force you might find in a hairdryer, or maybe a, a blender, or maybe even, like, a kid's toy here, right? Well, take it from me, these motors are not designed to be easily replaceable, let alone upgradable or, or interchangeable, right? And so, the, the software engineer in the MacGyver in me has to ask the question, why? <laughs> and, you know, I, I think that uh, it, it's kind of crazy, right? Because, you know, in software we celebrate concepts like loose coupling. So, uh, you, you know, you might say, though, like, well, you know, the requirements are different across those applications. And you would be absolutely right. But, you know, when we write code, even if it's simple code, we could usually justify spending the time to, to make that code function in a, a wide variety of environments and applications, right? So it can function as a loosely coupled component in the largely unopinionated, you know, bigger system, right? And so what if we did take a little, a little time and make some of these components just a, a little bit more smart, a little more intelligent? At, what if you could plug one of these into a device and it can negotiate its input and output requirements, right? You know, conversely, what if a device could pick the most efficient way to, to operate based on what components just happen to currently be inside of it, right?